I want to let everyone hear, uh, I'm going to get right to the point of, of why everyone needs to understand why we all need to pay attention to what's happening in pump systems. So whether you're in exploration, whether you're an operating mine, or whether you're a supplier, it doesn't make a difference. So just, just to get right to the point here, with this is a, a case from Rio Tinto in Australia. It was done by the University of Queensland. And the reason why I'm showing you this case is because there's hundreds of thousands of these around the world right now. So this is a two-year study conducted on pump systems. The mine has a lot of pumps, over 100 pumps. And over the course of two years, they identified these three pumps causing significant losses. They were all causing some loss in production, but these three in particular. And they led to a $10,500,000 loss in production over two years. In addition to that, there was a maintenance cost, additional maintenance of 200,000. And the estimated uh, water consumption, because that was the problem with the systems, was estimated to be 600% higher water use. So with pump systems, you use water to cool and lubricate the system. Some of this water goes back into the process, but a lot of it is lost to evaporation uh, and, and it's gone to the ground. So, why does this matter? Well, here's, here's the map from April for North America with the water stress levels. You can see what's happening. We're all affected by it. We're affected by water permits. We're affected by not being able to operate new plants because we don't have enough water. So it's a serious problem. And just to put it into perspective with pumps, a mine with 30 pumps, this is a small to medium-sized pump, uses 567,000 square meters of water, okay? So that is the equivalent of almost 240 Olympic-sized swimming pools. And this is just to cool and lubricate the pump. So the average person in this room uses about 400, 400 square meters, or sorry, 400 cubic meters of water annually for your own use. And the second part of pump systems, which I feel is getting overlooked, maybe because you can purchase more energy, but it's just equally as critical, is the energy consumption of a pump system. In the world, 20% of the world's energy consumption is from pump systems. And there's been massive, massive studies done, the US Department of Energy, the Hydraulic Institute, uh, the United Nations, and we know that we can save up to 50% of this energy consumption. When we're looking at pump systems, when you're buying a pump system for one of your new projects, typically the only thing that's looked at is the initial cost. And you can see that the initial cost is only 2% of the life cycle cost of the pump. The main cost is in the maintenance and in the energy and the water. And this is always overlooked. So I want, to, I want to share a case study that we did here in Coila. Uh, it was a sand mine. So it's interesting when I think about this because I think, well, a sand mine. Most of us are, are looking at the silver or copper or zinc, different things like that. But this is just to show you how much uh, a pump system can affect your operation. We got, we got called into this operation. They were operating for six months and they were down from 58,000 tons a month down to 5,000 tons a month. And we got, we got called in, and we went in, and we, de we determined that it was two pump systems. They thought it was one, but it was two pump systems that were actually causing them this, this loss in production. And it resulted to a loss of over 300,000 tons of production. So, what was going on here? We went in in December. We, dis we discovered what was happening. We, we assisted the maintenance teams. It was all happening in the maintenance and operation. And that's where, that's where the real issues of the pump systems are. It's not in, it, I mean, there, there is problems with selection, and it's usually with oversizing a pump, which causes more energy consumption. But in this case, it was the maintenance and operation. 
The people in the mine just didn't know how to fix these systems. They didn't know how to identify the problems in the systems. So we helped them do that, and we actually were able to increase production to over 60,000 tons a month. And when you take a look at it in terms of um, what happened in the, in the past with this mine, we, we measured the, the energy consumption on this one pump system. And just in one year, they spent over 30, 000, almost $30,000 additional in energy consumption. And it's really basic things of maintenance and operation. And the, and the water consumption, they almost doubled the water consumption just, again, to cool and lubricate the pump system. So there was an extra 10,000 cubic meters of, over 10,000 cubic meters of water consumption used. And we're talking about Kuwila, which if you're familiar what's been going on with the water stress in Kuwila over the past couple of years, I, I mean, you think about the impact, what would that mean to a small town or a small community near, near this plant? How would it affect their daily lives, losing this water? And this is one pump. So this, this uh, mine actually had over 30 pumps on site. And each one was doing the same thing. And when we measure the energy and the water consumption, it's directly correlated to how much maintenance you're going to have to do on the pump system. So when there's high, higher energy consumption or higher water consumption, we know that the, that the operation is actually not performing or failing. And what happened in this case, they were doing, uh, they were doing maintenance on that pump uh, every one, two, or three weeks. It was breaking down. And every single week, two weeks or three weeks, they were spending over $50,000 on spare parts. It's great if you're a pump company, but it's not good if you're in operation. So, this, this red line in the middle actually shows where they should have been with this pump system based on, on, on some of the calculations we did. Maybe they should have been changing the parts, you know, at worst every six months. But instead, they were doing it every three months. And they were on pace to spend over $11 million on parts over the life of this pump system in 25 years rather than maybe $2 million. So an additional $9 million for one of your operations for one pump system. So when you calculate, you're gonna have maybe 30 pumps on site, this is what it looks like over 10 years. You can see the electrical consumption, the additional CO2 from, from the pumps, or sorry, from the motor consumption, uh, and then the additional water consumption. And economically, what that means for your operation is you're gonna lose $275,000 in electrical consumption you're gonna lose 188,000 in water, in water costs. Although right now I think the most important thing is the actual quantity of water, not the cost of the water. And then the spare parts, close to $3 million. So if you have 30, 30 pumps on site, you're talking about close to $100 million over 10 years. Now, if you're, if you're producing gold or silver or copper, you're gonna be okay. It's, it's not that it's good, but you're gonna be able to pay for this. But when you're producing something like sand, you're not. You're gonna be closing your operation. So the big question is, why is this still happening? And the reason why this is still happening is because of lack of training. The training that, is, that, that was in the market when I scoured high and low trying to find something for the maintenance and operations teams was basically the pump companies training them how to just assemble, disassemble their pump and handing them a, a book that tells them how to start it, shut it down, and if there's operational problems, what parts you need. But the real problem is in the operation of the system, identifying things like air in the system, uh, different things like that, tank sizes, everything that, that these engineering firms do when they're, when they're selecting it. And the maintenance and operations teams don't have that knowledge. So training is essential. It, it is the difference between a good operation and a bad operation. And we know when we walk into a good operation that the team is actually properly trained. You can see a significant difference. We travel all over North America, South America, and you can see it. So, but there is very few cases of a properly trained team in pump systems. 
So we design programs for the leaders of pump systems, leaders that can identify these problems, fix these issues, and work hand in hand with them in the field to make sure that this isn't happening. And what we find is the results of certified training deliver in three areas. The first one, the operational efficiency and profitability. In this case, so this is a stat by ASTD, $1 spent on training yields $4.53 in return. I can tell you in this type of training for, for any operation, it's significantly higher in pump systems. If you take a look at the, the 10 years and $90 million, you're going to get a lot more. Uh, and then you get improved efficiency and productivity are the key drivers of this return on investment. The next one I feel is huge and it, it, it's so overlooked is the environmental impact reduction. So sustainable practices can boost profits by up to 60%. We see that when we go in and fix a system, you're, you're immediately reducing water consumption, you're reducing energy consumption, which leads to less parts use, which means less CO2, less you know, carbon emissions. So you get, you get a heavy impact on the environment. Less reduction, sorry, an impactful reduction. And the last is the safety and well being that we see. When you're significantly reducing your maintenance, you're obviously going to reduce your or increase your safety and well being. So, in, in this stat, training can reduce work, workplace injury costs by $370,000 a year for a mid sized company. And we're seeing it significantly higher. And that's it. So the, so the question is, when you're taking your discovery to operation, are you going to give your people the proper training? Make sure you're taking these steps, because right now, every single mine that we're walking into, whether it's Mexico or the United States or Canada, the teams aren't properly trained. And at the end of the day, if you don't, pro uh, if you don't properly empower your team, they don't know what they have to do to fix the situation. So, thank you. Any questions?